Hi. In this video, we're going to see how virtual circuit networks work. First of all, a brief reminder that this is a connectionless service, which means that we're going to have three stages. We're going to have a setup stage, then a data transfer stage, and finally, a teardown stage. This is the example network we're going to work with. It has two uh, end hosts, basically a source host with address A and a destination host with address B, and five rotors numbered from one to five. Each of these rotors is going to have a routing table, basically telling the rotor how to reach any given host in the network, and a forwarding table, basically telling the rotor where to forward any received uh, message. So all of the rotors are going to have the, the same instance of these routing and forwarding tables. First, we will start with the setup stage. It's important to note that this description of the setup stage is a concept, okay? We're not uh, explaining any concrete real network protocol here. This is just a generic concept and then uh, we will have different ways to implement this in different practical networks, but for academic purposes, it suits us well. So, in this uh, conceptual setup stage, if host A wants to communicate with host B, uh, it basically is going to send, first of all, a setup message, which is going to reach router 3, and then uh, router 3 will look up his uh, uh, routing table and see that uh, to reach B, it has to go through router 4 using uh, its port 3, uh, as, it's, uh, as it can be seen in the routing table. So uh, R3 will forward the message to R4, and R4 will do the same uh, process. It will look up the routing table and see that to reach B, it has to go through R2 uh, through the uh, interface 2. So it will forward the message to R2. And finally, R2 is going to check the routing table and see that uh, to reach uh, host B, it has to go through uh, interface 3. So finally, the setup message reaches uh, B. Assuming that B responds to the message, then uh, router R2 knows that the, uh, the path is successful and then it can update the forwarding table uh, to establish the virtual circuit. It does so by um, putting entries in the input and output sections of the forwarding table. Basically, uh, it will assign a virtual circuit's VC number for the input and uh, output ports, okay? So as you can see there in the table, it establishes that anything that it receives through port uh, one uh, with uh, a virtual circuit six, it's gonna uh, forward it through port three uh, using VC number 13. These numbers are arbitrary, are chosen by the rotor and are typically the uh, first three numbers available, okay? So after uh, updating the forwarding table, R2 will forward the message back to the path, uh, and R4 will receive the message and do the same operation with its forwarding table. In this case, it will assign VC number um, 23 to the input through port 4 and uh, uh, VC number 6 to the input through port 2. In the same way, R4 will forward the um, message to R3, which will also update the corresponding forwarding table, uh, putting the entries uh, uh, that are shown in the figure, basically uh, VC number 17 and port 1 in the input, uh, corresponding to VC number 23 and port 3 in the output. And finally, the um, confirmation message will uh, um, reach host A 
and the path would be reserved. Note that right now we have a full path from A to B reserved along with the required resources, for instance, bandwidth. So this would complete our setup stage. Next stage would be data transfer, which now that the circuit has been established is quite simple. Basically, the data packets now will only carry the VC number. In this case, it will be uh, VC number 17 from uh, host A to rotor R3. When rotor R3 receives the message, it will check the forwarding table and uh, it will know that it has to take this message and forward it through port 3, specifying VC number 23. It will do so, and then this uh, packet will be received by R4, which will do the same operation, check the forwarding table, and know that it has to forward the uh, packet through port 2, specifying VC number 6. Same operation will be performed by R2, which uh, will uh, check the table and uh, know that it has to forward the packet through port 3 using VC number 13, which uh, will be what it does, uh, to finally send the packet to destination host B. So that would be the data transfer stage, which uh, as you can see is quite simpler once the circuit has been established. The final stage would be the teardown, which is basically to free resources. Again, this is a concept, this is not the, necessarily the real way this is implemented in a real network, but it is uh, enough for academic purposes. So, uh, as we did in the setup stage, the source host would uh, send a teardown packet using the established circuit. So, um, the rotors along the way would forward it in the same way, so we see that R3 uh, checks the forwarding table and knows that it has to forward the packet through port 3 using VC number 23, but in this case, after forwarding the, the packet, it will delete the entry from the table. So for this rotor, the uh, virtual circuit is uh, uh, removed. And all rotors along the path are going to do the same, so R4 is going to check the routing table, know that it has to forward the packet uh, using port 2 and VC number 6, and deleting afterwards the entry. R2 will do the same, uh, knowing that it has to forward the packet through port 3 using VC number 13, and deleting the entry afterwards. So after this operation, the virtual circuit would be completely uh, released and all the resources would be free. So this is basically how a virtual circuit network works.